Hi, I'm Aideen and welcome to Playful Pathways. Today I am answering one of your help me questions and this one comes from the Walkers who write, we have three children aged between six and 12 and despite our best efforts to instill a sense of gratitude for the blessed life they lead, they just don't seem to appreciate anything. With Christmas around the corner, how can we begin to change this attitude? Thank you very much to the Walkers for this question. You know, I think it's probably universally acknowledged that most parents have felt this way about their children at one point or another. And you know, that can be quite frustrating and, and even embarrassing when children do that in public. Uh, but the thing to remember, I think, for a lot of children is that they don't necessarily have the perspective, the maturity, uh, the objectivity that us adults do uh, where we can see the work that's gone into something and we can really appreciate um, how much has gone into bringing that thing about or bringing uh, that thing into your life. It's hard for children to appreciate that fully without having experienced it for themselves. So first of all, it's, it's really normal for us to take for granted the things uh, that we just see every day or that we have in abundance. Like, um, you know, in the country where I live, I can go to the tap in my kitchen and there will always be water coming from that tap. So I take for granted that that's always going to be there because our relationships to, uh, to the things that we have and perhaps to other people that we have in our life really are shaped through our experiences and our interactions with them. I suspect that somewhere along the way your children have come to expect that what they have, uh, what they've experienced is totally normal. Perhaps they haven't ever had to think about not having those things or they haven't had to go through the experience of earning them, or there's a feeling that they're not particularly special, that there's plenty more where they came from. And it's important to bear in mind that this is probably quite generational and maybe even cultural. For example, my washing machine. I have never had to live without my washing machine. I've never had to go through the hard yards of, of having to wash my clothes by hand, like perhaps my grandparents or great grandparents did. So I've sort of come to take for granted my washing machine because I've never had to experience life without it. The good news is that there's lots of stuff that you can do to broaden your children's perspectives and to cultivate the sense of gratitude that you want them to have. So to shape my suggestions to you about how you can work on this, we're going to have a look at the six roots of strong parent-child relationships. And the three we're really going to focus in on today are simplifying, consistency, and reflecting. So first of all, let's have a look at simplifying. As I said before, it's really hard to appreciate something that you just have in abundance, that you're just totally surrounded by all the time. If you're thinking that it's the, or the children's possessions that they're not really appreciating, for example, their toys, then it might be time for you to consider reducing the amount of toys and other possessions that they have. Uh, if you want to have a look at my video on how to uh, simplify the toys and make a toy library, then that might be useful to you. Or you can simply go through them and start that process of giving some away, of going, what do you actually need? Which are the ones you've outgrown, you don't need, you don't play with? what you've got two of and giving them away to charities, to school, to other people who will enjoy them and appreciate them. If they're not appreciating the gifts that they receive or the experiences that they're having, then maybe it's time to reduce some of those in number or allow a longer period of time between uh, those particular activities or, or experiences so they can build the anticipation. Because of course, the other thing that happens when children aren't appreciating things is that they're not getting that same sense of enjoyment and specialness out of it. So you can simply correct that by having fewer of them in their lives. If they're not appreciating the help that you offer them, the assistance, or your availability of time to give them a hand doing the things that they want to do, then perhaps you need to think about uh, reducing the amount of help and assistance that you offer them and let them go it alone for a little while. And of course the other, the flip side, the other additional benefit of not giving them so much assistance is that when children are doing things by themselves, they get to uh, cultivate and strengthen that um, belief in their own abilities and their sense of independence and knowledge that they can do things for and by and with themselves. As well as simplifying and perhaps giving up or giving away some of their 
toys and possessions and other things that they have. It's also really important to give them some perspective of helping other people out. This is a really, really good one for helping children to appreciate what they got, is giving some assistance to somebody else who maybe doesn't have the opportunities or the, the, the experiences, the skills, the, the possessions, the things that they don't have. Actually giving up your time to help somebody else is a really, really good one. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is consistency. And of course, this is a really important one. Whenever you wanna try and put anything new in place in your home, you've got to be really, really consistent about it. So if you're putting a new rule in place uh, about something like um, no toys, uh, no little, little toys, little presents in between birthdays and Christmas, then that's something you've absolutely got to stick to. And of course, the other thing about consistency is that your children will be watching you all the time. So if you're trying to put in a uh, place, um, something where they're giving away some toys, going through, decluttering, thinking about who else they can give them to, then you will probably need to get on board with that as well and model for them, really show them in your actions that you are thinking about showing gratitude and giving away and, and thinking about people who are less fortunate than yourself by giving some of your possessions away as well. And finally, we're gonna have a look at reflecting. This is really about using the, uh, the words, the power of your words and, and your everyday actions and rituals to really cultivate this sense of gratitude and appreciation for what they have. So you can do this through everyday conversations and everyday opportunities and moments where this thought pops into your head. So for example, if your child is telling you about this, this new thing that they want, then that's a great opportunity to have a conversation with them about why that is that they that they want that thing and and how that thing might be able to come about so what might they have to do actually uh, what might they have to work at or participate in uh, to bring that thing about to have that experience or to have that thing in their lives another thing that's really important to do is of course to model gratitude let your he children hear you talking about how you appreciate those things that you have in your life and this is is something that you can uh, tie into sort of everyday little rituals. If you're a family who prays, then it might be something that you incorporate into your prayers, being appreciative of what you have. If you're not a family that prays, you still can incorporate it perhaps into your little ritual at the end of the day. When you think about how your day has been, when you say goodnight to each other, you can think about that. You might just talk about it. You might write it down. It might be something you do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. You might have a special meal at the end of the week where everyone has to uh, Think of something that they appreciated this week. Lots of little ways and things that you can do uh, to bring this, this feeling of appreciation to the forefront of people's minds. And of course, the thing to remember in all of this is that if you're trying to put something new in place or change an attitude, this is quite hard work and it takes a little while. And I would encourage you to be patient and to not get mad at your children and frustrated, although that's really easy and understandable to do at times. You really want to be uh, modeling these values that you want to see in them. And that's a really important part of it. You can't blame blame the student for, for not knowing what they haven't learned yet. So to summarize my suggestions to you, first of all, it's really hard to truly appreciate and feel gratitude for something that you're just surrounded by or that it's, it's just there all the time that you totally take it for granted. So to change this attitude, you might wanna think about simplifying so that there are fewer of those things or fewer of those experiences around. You wanna build that sense of anticipation and certainly a really good thing to do is to get your children involved in bringing these things about, making them work or experience some hardship and work for the things that they want. Secondly, you want to make sure that you are acting in a way that's really consistent uh, with this new attitude that you want everybody to have. And if there's any new rules um, or anything like that that you're putting in place, make sure that you're modeling these in your behavior. And thirdly, you want to make sure that you're talking about what you appreciate and what you're grateful for. And perhaps put in a few little rituals um, or activities or exercises that you can participate in together as a family where you really 
investing in this new attitude that you want everyone to have. Thank you very much to the walkers for that question. I really hope that you found some useful answers and suggestions there. If you liked this video, then you might like others that I've made. So make sure you press subscribe and check out the others in my video library. And if you've got a question that you'd like me to answer, then head to my Patreon page where members of the Playful Pathways community can submit their questions. Thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye.